Good morning. Good to be here with you this morning. Uh, it's always good to be down in Mondovi. I'm uh, slowly getting to appreciate it more and more. I'm Lauren Tag. I uh, am uh, Sam, a synodically authorized minister at uh, Modena Lutheran, and so I get to help here a little bit with confirmation, and uh, Pastor Rolf asked if I would help this morning. Uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, as you know, October 4th is your big central fest. There's 175 odd items that are uh, online and bidding has started. And so you can go on that and get that moving as soon as you want. Sounds like it should be fun. You have, uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, third graders will receive their Spark Bibles next Sunday at 9 o'clock parking lot service. Ruth, Rebecca, and Circles will be meeting on Tuesday, 1 at 5 and 1 at 6, and then Blessing of the Pets will be the 11th. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's beautiful here with all the quilts that, are being, that have been made. What a blessing, uh, the people who have made those and, and where they will go, that's really fantastic. We'll talk a little bit more about it later, uh, but thanks so much and what a way to spruce up the church even. Just uh, Although I, I don't know if you were planning on using the quilts when I was preaching or not, I was hoping you would maybe stay awake, but we'll see what, what happens. Uh, Mary Jane Korberg, uh, is very ill and it sounds like she might be completing her journey soon here on this earth. So keep her and the family in your prayers. Any other announcements? Uh, welcome to the people on, on uh, radio. We hope that you also enjoy the worship this morning. Any other announcements for the good of the people? That I Okay. Then we'll begin to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Praise, to Praise to God. Praise to God. What humans mean for harm. God can Let us confess our sins before God and one another. God of all ages, you have chosen us as your own, yet we so often live as if it were not so. We succumb to things which are not good for us. We believe we know better than you. We refuse to put our trust in your promises, sweep away our foolishness, and bring us back into a trusting relationship with the one who has lovingly created us and longs to be our strength in life. Dear people, hear the joyful words that God has forgiven us. Our misdeeds and folly are forgotten. Grace and mercy abound. Let us give thanks that we have a compassionate creator. We'll continue with the uh, gathering hymn. Uh, we praise you, O oh God.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. God of dreams and hope, you spoke to Joseph in his dreams, and those dreams led him to great danger. Yet you used the challenges in his life to save the lives of others. In you, no good thing is accidental. You work in us and through us, even when we are not aware of your presence. Help us to know that you are with us and that only you are capable of turning all evil to good. Amen. We're going to have the dedication uh, of the Lutheran World Relief Quilts and Knits. And again, I want to say uh, I had the privilege of going overseas back in the 70s, and we saw quilts from here for a lot of people. And, and we traveled the whole east coast of Africa. And uh, I have to admit, I suffered more from the cold than I did the heat, uh, especially in Ethiopia late at night and stuff like that. And uh, the quilts make a difference. You saw a lot of them that were worn and worn out. Uh, so thank all those who have taken the time to uh, make these quilts. It's a labor of love, and we so appreciate the work and also the kits and everything else. What a blessing you are to people. So let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, maker of all things, you have blessed us with so many gifts. A good eye for color, the ability to make fine stitches, the skills to develop ever new and exciting patterns. Now we offer the fruits of our labors, the quilts and kits we have made to you. We dedicate these quilts and kits to your service, trusting that your love will go wherever each item is sent, making it more than just a piece of material, a collection of items, making each piece you may have created an expression of love. There is no way for us to imagine the power and effect an act of love can have on a person's life. How you can use something as small as a quilt, a layette, a health kit to radiate your love from us to the world. May these be used in your service and become blessings for all those who receive them. Lord, we know that we all possess, that all we possess comes from your loving hand. Give us grace to honor with all of your, our being. Draw our hearts to you, guide our minds, fill our imaginations, control our wills, so that we may be wholly yours. Use us as you will, always in your glory and the welfare of your people. Amen. The preparation reading, or I would like to say the gospel reading for today, uh, if you want to stand, you are sure welcome to. Uh, from Luke, the sixth chapter. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners, sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. The Gospel of the Lord. This is a long reading, and there's about four or five parts. We decided we probably won't read that to you today. I will probably just read through this, not read through it, just talk to you a little bit about this as we go through it. 
Uh, Joseph is an interesting character in the Old Testament. One of the, actually one of the more saintly ones, if you will, it seems like uh, the way he handled things. He was born to a big family, 12 kids. There were two mothers, one had 10 and the other had two, and he was the firstborn of the second. So he was kind of the favorite. You know, Israel, the, the dad, had worked seven years for each one of his wives from his uh, father-in-law. So he, uh, but Rahab was, was the one he thought, or not Rahab, Rachel was the one he thought he was going to have first, but they tricked him, and so he had to work another seven years to get the one that he wanted to marry in the first place. Uh, so Joseph was that son, and Joseph became... Israel's favorite. Now you've all heard Tommy Smothers and uh, Nick Smothers talking about Mama always loved you best. And uh, my brother likes to use that line too with uh, uh, my other older brother who was a pastor and who was always good at everything. You know, Mom and Dad always loved you best. And it's kind of said kind of funny in a way, but sometimes it gets a little bit more real, doesn't it? Sometimes you get that feeling that somebody loves the other one better than you. And it kind of bites. Well, it really irked Joseph's brothers. In fact, so much so, especially when he was at dreaming, and he had dreams in which he was the center and they were all bowing to him. How arrogant can you get? Us going to bow to you? And then Jacob made this coat of many colors, as you heard, for Joseph, which is a sign of great love. Wow. Joseph seemed to have it all, and the brothers seemed to have nothing but hate and enmity towards him. As it goes on, they're out one time, and he goes to visit them, and uh, they decide, now's our chance, and they were going to kill him. But one of the brothers, said, uh, Reuben, said, no, let's... Uh, not and they put him in this well and then they ended up selling him and he ended up in Egypt he ends up in Egypt he does a great job for uh, Potiphar who is uh, the guy who he's working for but Potiphar's wife had more intention than Joseph had and she went after him and he left ran out of the building but she kept the cloth and she came to Potiphar and said this servant of yours because now she was angry at him, did this, tried to uh, abuse me. So Joseph gets put in jail. Now he sits in jail. He's here, he had a tough life, hadn't he? He was kind of the, the middle, the center, but he was also this, not to have your brothers like you, have your brothers hate you so much they want to kill you, they sell you into slavery, you do a good job as a, as a slave helping uh, Potter out, and now all of a sudden the wife accuses you of a crime you didn't commit, and now you're in jail. That doesn't seem like a good start to a life to me. I think a lot of us, if we had that kind of a situation, we might start getting a little bitter. Why is God doing this to me? But we don't hear that from Joseph. He was one who ended up interpreting dreams and, I, and he ends up being rescued and all of a sudden he's not only uh, uh, second in command in Egypt, he, he saves the people from the coming famine. Seven years they saved food so they would have for the future. And he's in a great place. And now his brothers have to go because famine hit their land and they had to go and they didn't even recognize Joseph when they saw him. They were so sure he was gone. Well, the story unfolds that finally they end up coming to live in Egypt and he reveals himself to them and they were fearful, but then all of a sudden there was weeping for joy that the family had been united. They were alive. Life seems to go well and then Jacob dies and now the brothers are worried, why? They were worried because now Joseph can take his revenge. Now Joseph can get even. 
and they were fearful, and Joseph can't believe it. He can't believe that they would even think. He has forgotten the things that they had done for him. In fact, he says, the thing that you intended for evil, God turned to good. He took a life that seemed to be in so much struggle and brought goodness out of it and actually saved his brothers and other people, even the Egyptians. I mean, he could have been angry at the Egyptians too because they bought him, put him in slavery. He got falsely accused, was put in prison. He could have spent all that time harboring hurt and bitterness. But we find that in our lives sometimes, don't we? Uh, I had an uncle that he and his wife were some of the most enjoyable people. When they laughed, the whole house laughed. Uh, I mean, even I mean, it was loud. I mean, they just had such a joyous uh, laughter. Had four daughters and a farmer down in Iowa, and just a lot of good. He died of a heart attack when he was 80. She lived a few more years afterwards, probably about 10 to 12 years. The youngest daughter moved in with her and took care of her for the last 10, 12 years. And the, his, her husband uh, farmed the land. But the oldest daughter had stayed home from college to help him at, uh, uh, earlier in the life so she could help uh, him get through some tough times there. And he said he would take care of her in the inheritance. Well, when the wife died then after Every year she gave everything, we understand, to the youngest daughter, the farm, everything else. And the oldest daughter didn't get hardly anything. The anger and the bitterness between them became so great that they no longer spoke to each other. And as far as I know, it's been 30 years that they haven't spoken. That's what happens to us when we let bitterness and anger Get in. Is it right to be angry? Is it right? Did they, the older daughter have a reason to be shortchanged? But to hold it so they no longer have a family where they would speak to each other. After all the laughter that went on in that house, after all the witnessing and, and, and stuff that went on, to have that bitterness divide a family so much. It happens, doesn't it? We hear of it all the time when money gets involved, inheritance, or something where somebody in the family makes a charge against somebody else and they split. In fact, there was a place in, a, in my hometown, they said two sisters lived together. Well, they didn't exactly live together. They had a spat and they drew a line down the middle of the house and they didn't cross that line into the other person's territory. And they lived that way for many years. What a sad thing that happens to us when we let our anger, even if it's right, where we have a reason for that other person who hurt us to be angry with them and to let it grow and it shortens our world so that our houses become in half. We no longer have that wide sense of community with those around us. Forgiveness is crucial to us as people of faith. Forgiveness makes all the difference in the world, not just to those who we care about, but to anyone. And then, not only to forgive, forgiveness means let it go and forget. Corey Tendloom used to say, uh, God would take all our sins and throw them into the deep sea, and then would post a sign, no fishing here. I kind of like that. Don't go back there trying to dig them up or get them a hold again. There was a priest who uh, at a young age felt that he had done a terrible sin. He, uh, it bothered him. He asked for forgiveness, but he carried it with him all his life, not sure that he was really forgiven. And I dare say we did confession of sin earlier. There may be things in our lives, your life and my life, that we aren't really sure of God has forgiven. Well, he was in this small Midwestern town when he heard that there was a, a lady in town who had visions in which she sometimes, this is a legend, talked with God and God talked back to her and stuff. And so he said, maybe you ought to go see her. And so he kind of worked up the courage one day and went to her house and they sat down for tea. And uh, obviously it wasn't Norwegian if they had tea. 
Uh, but anyway, they uh, had this little conversation and he said, is it true that you sometimes have visions? She said, yes. And that you talk to our Lord during that time? She said, yes. He said rather meekly, would you ask a question of the Lord for me? She was curious about what that would be. She said, yeah, I, I would be glad to. He said, would you ask about your priest and the sin that he committed when he was a young person, if he would, could remember, if he could name that? She said, okay. He left and a few weeks later he came back and he said, have you had that time to meet with this lady ever with, with the Lord or have a vision? And she said, yes. Did you talk to him? And did you ask that question? And she said, yes. And he kind of slowly said, what did he say? And she looked gently into his eyes and said, the Lord says he can't remember. You see, our God not only forgives our sins, this one who knows the whole universe and created it has a short memory when it comes to our sins. Your sins are forgiven and forgotten. He's not holding a grudge against you. He's on your side. He's not against. While you are yet sinner, while you are yet enemies with God, Christ came and died for you and for us for the whole world. So now we have that wonderful, marvelous opportunity to do what? To forgive and to forget. And we get to start today new. And tomorrow new. Even if we mess up now, it's not just sins from way back when, it's the sins of this last week. It's the failures that we have, that we live in. We can hear God say, I can't remember them. They are gone. Let's go forward, not looking back. I was looking at the leaves on the way here this morning, how beautiful and how wonderful fall is. I'm getting at that age, I'm 75, where I'm starting to kind of really appreciate the fall and the fall colors of my life. How beautiful to remember. Kindness is given and received. How marvelous to have been able to love and to be loved. The many colors and the many ways that that comes to us in our life. And I think in the fall of our life, we get to enjoy it more than any other time if we take what Joseph and what God wants us to, to see the beauty of it and the enjoyment of it, to celebrate it. You, people of God, your sins are forgiven, your sins are forgotten, and newness is yours. Amen. Well, 612, the hymn of the day, healer of our every ill.
continue with the service of healing. Our Lord Jesus healed many as a sign of the reign of God. Come near and sent the disciples to continue this work of healing with prayer, the laying on of hands and anointing. In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust to God all who need healing. Sisters and brothers, I invite you to receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. And if you would uh, want to give the sign of the cross on your own forehead, I would encourage you to do so. Those at home could make the sign of the cross on those who are near you and uh, receive this oil as a sign of forgiveness and healing in Jesus Christ. And the one he, be, uh, being anointed responds, Amen. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Let us pray. Living God, through prayer and our gathering together, grant comfort and suffering to all who need healing. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. And when alone, assure them of the support of your holy people in your great mercy. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gifts of earth, life on earth, for our human bodies and all you have created. In your great mercy, merciful God, by the wounds of your Son, we are healed. Bring your saving health to all people in your great mercy. Restoring God, your Son Jesus brought the gift of healing and wholeness. Bring your healing presence now to those we name in prayer, and all who are in, in any distress. Hear the prayers of our hearts in your great mercy. Almighty God, source of human knowledge, give skill, wisdom, and compassion to all who provide medical care in your great mercy. Sustaining God, give gentleness and courage to family members, friends, and caregivers who minister to all who are suffering in your great mercy. 
God of great and abundant mercy, with your presence sustain all for whom we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now, as we know, the offering we don't, the plate is back there. And again, if you want to give online, um, that would be something to consider also. And that's in the bulletin. And we'll have music for the offering. O oh God, we offer our gifts, ourselves, our lives to your service. Bless what we give and use it in ways to bring healing and hope for the sake of your world in need and for the building of your kingdom. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of all consolation bless you in every way, grant you hope all the days of your life, restore you to health, and grant you salvation. Fill your heart with peace and lead you to eternal life. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. One of the things we do at Modena that I've kind of enjoyed is uh, uh, as they're singing the song, like, Be Thou My Vision, if you want to hum along, I, I think that's safe to do somewhat. You can sure do that also.